Greetings folks, and welcome to another edition of Fishing with Uncle Philster. This episode I thought I'd show you how to make a good safe wire trace for bait fishing for pike. Now first of all we talk about the wire itself. The most common wire used is 7 strand. You can also get a 19 strand, a 49 strand. You can get coated or uncoated wires. Any of the major brands will do. They're all decent. I never really hear any bad reports about any of them. Drennan 7 strand and um, Fox Easy Twists like this. Um, Savage Gear AFW wire. This one that not a lot of people have heard of unless they're really into the Icon. Mason Multi Strand. All good 7 strand ones. And then you have like the Drennan Soft Strand, which is 19 stranded. The AFW wires also do a 19 strand one. There's also 49 strand. Like um, Wonder Wire, Drennan do one, AFW do one, Savage Gear do one, Fox do one. They're all really good, and the good thing about them is they're so supple. Like if you did this with a seven strand, it would be kinked. Not so with a 19 or 49 strand. That being said, it is a lot more expensive and you get a lot less wire for your money. Um, coated wires like Corval Flex, a lot of people really rate that because it's very kink resistant. Um, Drennan and Green Strand as well, but well, I actually, I'm not that keen on the Green Strand because I find the coating tends to strip off fairly easy once it comes into contact with a pike's teeth. Breaking strain rise. You want to be using about thirty pound. Anything less than thirty pound, if you're using a seven strand, especially, you'll find that you get problems with it kinking a lot of the time with small fish because they thrash around a lot, often tangling up in the wire, and you can go through a trace of fish. Pike aren't wire shy at all, so. Even though the wire is thicker, it doesn't really matter. Some people even use like £45 for a bait trace with no problems at all. Um, now, as to, to the length of the trace, you want about 20 inch finished trace. So to get a 20 inch finished trace, you want about 24 inches of wire. So in metric, that would be 50 centimetre finished trace, so cut off around about 60 centimetres of wire. And then you move on to hooks. Most people use trebles, and um, you can get double hooks as well, though I actually don't use them myself. Um, there are two main styles of treble that you want to use. Usually, you want to get the one that's got a fairly narrow or small eye on it, like that, and like that, it's not too big, and get some with really huge eyes. A lot of people really rate owner hooks, and personally I think you're paying a lot more money than they're actually worth when it comes to the trebles, because you only get a few in a packet, and it's like five, six pound for a packet of eight, or six even. Most of the major brands are all good. Eagle Claw, VMC, like I said, owners, though they are expensive. Savage Gear ones, Drennan, use Drennan ones, 25 years, no problems. Um, Eagle Claws, I've already mentioned. Um, Fox, Camisans, Mustards. Most of them are decent. Just get, make sure you get a decent pattern. Now, especially for beginners, what I would say is, get so these ones here are semi barbed. Now, if I show you this in close up, you can see that 
only this point here has a barb on it and that is on the braised on hook not the double hook that this hook is braised onto. These two hooks with no barb on stand proud of the bait and the one with the barb on goes into the tail root or the flank of the bait. Especially if you're fairly new to piking, use these. Drennan do them, Fox do them, uh, I think Kamasan do them as well, VMC do them. You'll find that unhooking pike is so much easier with this. And you don't tend to drop fish when you're fishing for pike quite as much as you would other fish because you play them hard, get them in, keeping the tight line all the time. I can't stress enough how quick unhooking and fish handling is really of utmost importance when it comes to pike fishing because they are very fragile. They might look tough, but they're not. So, use semi barb trebles. If for some reason you can't get semi barb trebles, and you have quite a bit of experience pike fishing, you can use barbed ones. But like I say, if you're new to the sport, you will have problems on hooking pike with standard trebles. Sometimes what I do, especially with like these Eagle Claw 374s, is I turn those into a semi barb treble. So if you can't get semi barb ones as they are for some reason, I mean it's the internet now, so you can usually find online to our shops that sell them, then you can create your own semi barb on by taking a standard treble leaving the one that's braced on with a barb on for holding the bait and then take the double hook and crush the barbs down gently like that and like that and say that what I've created semi barb treble that has a slight bit more holding power than the one that's manufactured like that so you just have a small bump and that can be unhooked from a fish very easily almost as easy as a standard semi barbed and it comes to hook size size 6 like these is pretty much standard for a pike trace. But you can use like a four for bigger baits. So like say eight to ten inch baits, possibly use a four or even up to twelve inch. Standard six, seven inch bait. Use a size six. And anything smaller you could use a size eight, but you cannot don't get away with a six. Now, once we've cut off our 60 centimetres, two feet of wire, we want to take the hook, that's going to go on the end, and then take the wire, and about five centimetres, two and a half inches, so just Bend it round something narrow with a round radius. So you end up with a loop like that. Not a sharp angled kink because that will weaken the trace. Then you want to put the loop in the wire through the eye of the hook and then tease the loop around points of the trebles like so. So you want this loop to go over the eye 
with a hook again just like so sink it down just like that don't worry about any slight bend and that will be taken out when you twist it up you can just ease it back in with your fingers what you want to worry about is any sharp kinks in the wire because that will weaken the trace then move the main trace body out of the way take a light down and you want to heat the tag end up as close as you can get to the eye of the hook without damaging the main trace wire or where it's hitched around the hook eye so you just heat this up until it glows red and all this does is anneal the wire and makes it a lot easier to twist so get to about there and stop you can see the wire changes it got slightly let it cool down for a few seconds and then what we want to do is take the wire and hold that at a right angle like so and then a twiddling stick you can actually buy them I'll knock this one up in a couple of minutes because I couldn't actually find my twiddling stick put it through the eye of the hook that's it, hold the wire at 90 degrees and pinch and you want to twist it in the direction the wire goes so it's coming towards me so I want to turn the twiddling stick away from me and hold the wire pinch like so 90 degrees so the coils when you twist it all lock into each other nice and tight just like that so there we go it's nice and strong never going to come undone if you wanted you could put shrink tubing or a sleeve over there if you wanted to make it nice and neat but I personally don't do that because I find that it just encourages the hook to rust if you've been fishing and your trace is fine and you put it away and still holding a little bit of water in there I find it especially a problem with bronze hooks and then what you want to do next is put on the upper hook you want to take the hook and you want to go through the back of the eye so that's in between the double hooks and out on the side where the braised on hook is and you want to slide the hook down to match the size of the bait so that you end up with one in the tail root and one in the middle of the flank of the bait so for 7 8 inch fish that you're using for bait you want about 4 inches gap that'll avoid any deep hooking, deep hooking sorry so pike welfare is really really important and we want to avoid deep hooking as much as possible so space the hooks out and then hold the wire like so and bend it so it comes parallel to the shank and then take it in between the two doubles like so and then you want to wrap back up the shank three or four times like so and then pass the end back through the hook eye Now that's the hook solidly fixed never going to come undone 
watch shift on you will give you an instant firm positive strike into a fish if it takes the bait. Now come to the swivel end and I'll do the crimping method this time just so you can see the difference and decide which one you prefer. When it comes to crimps there's quite a few brands on but again any of the major brands will be okay. Um, Drennan Slim crimps are good. The uh, Fox ones are quite good as well. Like I say any of the major brands. But what you need to do is match the crimps diameter, the inner diameter that is, to the wire diameter. So for about a 30 pound pike trace you want about 0.8 millimeters internal diameter. So you slide the crimp on first. Crimps are usually made from copper or brass in these small sizes and be crimped very easy with this set of small pliers like this or set of proper crimping pliers which won't over crimp because over crimping is what damages the wire so you, you avoid it with these but with the set of small pointed nose pliers you have to be very careful not to go over the ends and to make sure you don't crimp it too tight. So now slid the crimp on to the wire first. Then what you want to do if I do not the camera is take a swivel. Size 8 is usually around about the standard these days. Whatever suits your terminal tackle really. And again about two and a half inches or so, six centimeters. Put a little nice rounded band using something round and narrow like the wire of a hook. And just like you put the hook on through the eye of the swivel then put the swivel through the loop slide it down can't be tricky again and again you want that little bend you put in to end up at the front of the eye it's probably hard to see how I'm sliding this over but a couple of practices and you'll get it cinch it down slide the crimp back down the wire, hold the tag end parallel, put over the tag end and the main wire down towards the swivel, turn the tag end over and then slide it back through the crimp, it can be very fiddly doing this bit especially if you have a little stray bit like that just neaten it up again if need be and then just feed that wire back through as much as you can there we go just like that. So you have three strands of wire inside the crimp. Just 
like so. Take the crimping pliers, place it centrally in the pliers. And then squeeze hard. There we go. Nicely crimped. That isn't going to break or anything. Again, you can neaten it up if you want, especially because you tend to get a little loop. You can try and feed it down as much as you like. And that pretty much covers it. Any questions or anything? Leave them below. See you next time.